Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Prada Museum for another of our weekly sessions in English, this program that is made possible with the support of the nonprofit, the American Friends of the Prada Museum. Today, I'm really excited to be able to talk about one of the few women painters that we have, that we have here in the Prada's collection of Sofonisba Anguissola. Sofonisba had a long, fascinating life, and she really broke through some of the stereotypes around artistic ability and creative capacity of women in her time in the 16th century. And so today, we're going to look at a few of the portraits that she painted when she was at the Spanish court and get to know a little bit about, about Sofonisba. So we'll start with this portrait of Elizabeth of Valois, who was the third wife of Philip II. And we can tell that this, is, that this is a court portrait, right? I mean, I think that when you see court portraits in a museum, they immediately jump out at you. They have this similar air, a style, a, a distance, this gesture. Everything is telling us all about the position and the power of the person that we're looking at. Her hair and her clothes are glittered with jewelry. We can see these, these buttons that are fastening her sleeves that are brought together with, with rubies and with diamonds. And her, her dress is glittering with pearls. Everything is telling us about the social position and the power of this person. But there's another detail, too, that we have to notice here. In her hand, she's holding a miniature. And this is uh, a small portrait of her husband, of King Philip II of Spain. Now, she might be carrying this miniature because she's the queen consort of Spain, but she might also be carrying it because uh, she represented her husband at an important conference, the Conference of Bayonne. And somebody who stands in representation of the king of Spain, well, that's a very powerful person. We can also notice the inclusion of the column in the side here, which is also adding strength to the portrait, but it also ties this portrait into the lineage of Habsburg portraits, because they do tend to have this column. This portrait used to be attributed to Alonso Sanchez Coelho. And if we look around the room, we can see a few other portraits by Sanchez Coelho, and there's one actually right next to this one. Um, and we can immediately see a, a similarity in style, in gesture, in distance, in formality. It's easy to think how, how this painting might have been uh, confused with a painting by the court painter Sanchez Coelho, but it went uh, with that attribution for centuries. So how did that happen? Well, Sofonisba painted this when she was a lady in waiting at the court um, for Isabel for Elizabeth of Valois. And as a lady in waiting, she wasn't at the court really as a court painter. She was there to be the company of the royal family. And so she was there and she painted. She gave classes to Elizabeth as well. But she painted for the pleasure of the court and for, the, and for her own pleasure. Um, and so that means that she didn't take payments for her paintings. She didn't write or sign contracts for her paintings. And she didn't have a workshop. And all of these things, uh, well, on top of the fact that it's already difficult to become a successful painter as a woman in, this, in the 16th century, well, this has made it more difficult for historians to find Sofonisba's work, to identify it as Sofonisba's. But in the past few decades, well, art historians are catching up, and more and more paintings have been reconsidered and reattributed to Sofonisba. And Sofonisba Anguissola is really such a unique figure, not just because she is a woman painter, but also because she's unique among women painters. Uh, some of the painters that are women that we can think of from this time period come from families of painters, like Artemisa Gentileschi or Lavinia Fontana. But Sofonisba had a very different upbringing. She came from Cremona in northern Italy, and she was born into a noble family that wasn't necessarily very affluent, but they had good connections. And her father was very insistent on giving all of his daughters, the six daughters, an excellent education following the humanist standards at the time for women, which meant that they were well versed in a little bit of everything, in a little bit of painting, a little bit of music, a little bit of literature, a little bit of languages, so that they could uh, rise socially and, and be ladies in, that were well positioned. It became evident at an early age that Sofonisba was very talented in painting. And so she would practice at home. She 
painted portraits of her family members and also portraits of herself. And in these self-portraits, she depicted herself painting, reading and writing at a table, listening and playing to music, doing these things that reflected that unique, that excellent education. So her father took advantage of some of these self-portraits and really used them kind of as business cards, and he passed them out to all of his connections, even to Michelangelo. Zofonisba had correspondence with Michelangelo, and it was a way to promote her artistic capabilities, but also promote Zofonisba as a lady with an excellent upbringing. And she really acquired some sort of a level of celebrity. And so Philip II called here. Here we have a picture of, of Philip II. So we can see who we're talking about. Philip II called her to his court to be a lady in waiting first for his daughter and then to his wife, Elizabeth of Valois. And let's look also at, when we're looking at this portrait, we can also see um, not just her artistic talent, but also how close she was with the royal family. When we look at this, we can see that, Sof that Sofonisba has been uh, very discreet, but also clear and giving Philip this understated, this really understated gesture here with his hand on the armchair. That hand that is resting there um, really is indicating his authority, his regal authority. On the other side, we can see a sword that is hanging at his hip, which talks more about his social position, really, than his military standing. Um, and here, we see, and he's also holding a rosary, talking about his religious beliefs. So here we have an image of Philip as a refined, as a distinguished man, a religious man of the court, looking calm, serene, and elegant. And adding to that elegance, adding to that serenity, really is the soft, diffused light that Sophonisba has used to paint him. And especially in his face, you can see um, in, the, in his icy blue eyes and in the modeling of the face, and also in the details of, of the lace here. We're deep in those, within the lace, you might expect to find these really sharp shadows, but really it's just this soft, diffused, gentle treatment of light that adds to the cool, serene refinement of Philip as a man of the court. And if we look across the room, we can also see a portrait of his wife, of Anna of Austria as well. This is Philip, the four, sorry, Philip II's fourth wife. After Elizabeth died, he married Anna of Austria. And here we see Anna, um, again, with all of her regal authority. Um, and she's wearing some jewelry here, but it's very different than the jewelry that we saw in the court portrait of Elizabeth. She's wearing this beaded necklace echoing the rosary that we just saw in the portrait of Philip II. And it might be made of kalumbuka wood, or it might be made of amber. And we can also see that she's wearing this chain as a belt that might be made of athabache stones. This is a jet black stone that was popular in jewelry at the time. But this is the kind of jewelry that Anna would have worn on any given day, not necessarily for a grand official portrait. So it might tell us a little bit about the proximity of Sofonisba to the royal family. Sofonisba painted these just before she left the court for her first marriage. And well, she lived a very long and fascinating life, and uh, uh, I hope that you've enjoyed getting to know a little bit more about Sofonisba and her time at the court. And if you want to know more, then you can go to the Prado's website and find out more with all of our multimedia there, and also look up the catalog from 2019, the story of two women painters about Sofonisba Anguissola and Lavinia Fontana. So thank you for joining me again, and we'll see you here next Wednesday for another session in English.